Ben and Jim, congratulations to the two of you on this film. I cried throughout and I was so moved by your performances. I honestly cannot wait for the world to see this movie. You guys were both incredible in it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, well, of course, I love the scene where Michael brings Kit home and it's Smurfs galore. I had a unicorn collection growing up, but it was nowhere near the extent of Michael's Smurf collection. Did the, did the two of you collect anything growing up? My brother also did Hot Wheels. So there was a lot of Hot Wheels and unicorns around my childhood home. Oh, uh, what a combination. <laughs> I didn't have a big collection. For a while, I collected Star Wars, the little figurines of that. Um, okay. It was never as vast as Michael's Smurf collection, I'll be honest. Yeah, I, the, not really a collection. I did collect for a while snails, live snails in in a couple of jars and <laughs> that's really upsetting isn't and i it? used to put no i used to put vegetation in there oh, i was like nice. kind of protecting them and they all had to have names that began with an s so like sally <laughs> stephanie simon and i carried them around with me for a short time but but not many there was never never above 10 and the other thing i had a small collection of was stuffed uh seal pups which i think is quite a weird a weird well, thing to collect well we could go for hours on that <laughs> as in toy, like, as in toy, toy stuff, no, not, not, not taxidermy. Not, yeah. not, yes, you know, yes, yes. Me. No, I got it. I yeah, can yeah, safely yeah. say no one's told me <laughs> they've ever collected snails. This is awesome. <laughs> no. Well, I thought the two of you had amazing chemistry. And when I was watching the film, I was curious when the two of you first met prior to filming and how you decided to build the chemistry between Mike and Kit. So, Jim, I'll begin with you. Well, we started with emails. As soon as we knew that it was official and we were going to go, I initiated an email ch chain with uh, Ben that we worked on for a few months before he got here. And and that was largely due to the fact that we already knew that he was going to arrive and we'd start shooting like the next day. And it seemed impossible to try and portray the depth of a relationship we wanted to do without getting to know each other a little bit first. Um, right. So that was how it started. And then how did it end? <laughs> it didn't and end. then Ben, how did it end? end? <laughs> this is now ended. This, uh, it's now ended. We're no longer friends. It's over. Um, it's and then and, I, and then we were just we were very lucky. I think very blessed that we actually that we actually got on. And I think yeah. those I think those emails really helped in that that it was such a foundation of really knowing each other. And we were very candid and we discussed all sorts of things in those emails. And it meant that we weren't going in cold. And really, it, it started a conversation that <laughs> that as cheesy as it sounds has never ended. No, it's true. We're still on it's WhatsApp true. communicating. Towards lines. the end of production, Ben said, I have never sat in a director, the chair uh, right off camera and just talked to the other actor. Like we did the entire shoot. We never ran off to our dressing rooms unless yeah. you had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, last question for you. I know that Michael had a huge, you know, presence on set and uh, clearly, you know, you both read the book, but is there something that he told you about Kit and their relationship that maybe readers didn't pick up on in the book that you feel comfortable with sharing? Ben, is there anything helpful for you that helps like you get into the character a little bit more? I, th I think for me, yeah, I, uh, Michael very generously uh, made himself a, an, an open, I mean, that was the book, but an open book for me <laughs> in terms of a, a resource. And something he really helped me with was um, I asked about Kit's photography and Kit's artwork. And and really, it was just, it was such a pleasure for me to look at that. But he was able to steer me. Kit has a, a Flickr account still and also the Kit Cowan archives on Instagram. And it was such an insight into his humor and his wit and how he observed life. And for me, that really... I suppose it just excited me to be able to to be able to look at those images and kind of uh, find out more about who he was. And also, uh, the the small black point and shoot that I use in the film is Kit's actual camera. Um, Michael had saved many of his objects, so that was a very powerful thing on those days, especially the Benny's burrito scene when we're photographing each other. That, that, oh, that I was love Kit's that scene. Camera, yeah. I love that scene where they are wrapping me. Congratulations again to the two of you. Ben, I have to say, I love our soul guy and Fleabag, oh. one of my favorite shows. So congratulations <laughs> again. I, I love it. I had to mention it. I'm like, you are credited for the rest of your life as our soul guy from Fleabag, which I love. My favorite credit. <laughs> well, yeah, so nice chatting with the two of you. And I cannot wait you for too. fans and audiences to see Spoiler Alert. Congratulations again. Thank Michael, you. congratulations to you on this film. I watched it just yesterday and it was so, emotional for me so I'm sure it was so emotional for you just being on set and watching it but I absolutely loved it and I oh. went and bought the book on Amazon so oh thanks for that 
<laughs> yes, yes. So over the past few decades, I've actually read your articles on TV shipping. And I love your hints about when couples were going to get back together or hints about what's going to be in the next episode. Like I particularly love Chuck and Sarah from Chuck, one of my favorite TV yeah. ships. I also love Buffy and Angel. So I'm curious for you, what are your favorite top like three TV ships? Do you have a top three? Yeah. Oh, um, absolutely. Cruise in Eden from Santa Barbara. And that's a throwback. Okay. You probably have never even heard of that show, but it's an 80s. I 80, haven't seen it. It's an 80s soap opera, Santa Barbara. Cruise in Eden is at the top of the list. Um, but more, more contemporary examples would be Felicity and Ben um, from, from yep. Felicity, obviously. Uh, and, um, uh, let me think, uh, Lorelai and Luke from Gilmore Girls. Oh my God. Gilmore Girls is a staple. And I love how you had like a little role in there in the revival too. <laughs> and not just the revival. I would like to point out, I was in the original series too. Oh, I know. No, I know. I, you're all, oh. I, no, I definitely know. I love how, I mean, I love how you came back for the revival. Oh, I, I came back. That. Yes. Yeah, I also love- Just yeah, wanted to be clear for the record. I was in it twice. You were in it twice. Yes, I love that. <laughs> I also love David and Patrick from Schitt's Creek and like Claire and Jamie from Outlander too. Those are two like more recent oh, ones. Those are great ones, yeah. Yeah, I know that you were involved on set. I saw on your Instagram, you were posting behind the scenes photos. Was there a particular scene where you were just watching Jim and Ben and you were like, wow, that is like me and Kit. Is there a particular scene where you just kind of got lost and you were just like, wow, this is like so reminiscent of my life. The deck scene at the end was probably oh. more than any other scene in the movie, the closest to actually what that experience was like in real life, um, eerily so. And Jim and Ben were so present for that, for that scene. And um, what was great about that moment is uh, Michael Showalter, the director, really gave them a wide net to to sort of um, play in that scene and even improvise a little bit. And it was they were, they were just so comfortable with each other, um, and it was just such a beautiful scene. And and I, I was having you know I was having there was a couple moments where it's like it, it felt a little bit like looking back in time, um, and that. That didn't happen a lot during the movie because I always was very much aware we are making a movie. These are actors bringing their own staple to the show, uh, to yeah. the movie. I'm sorry. But that moment, it felt it was it, it felt like looking back in time. Is the Smurf collection in the movie your actual Smurf collection or pieces of it? That is my actual Smurf collection. And it is only a fraction of the overall collection. Oh my God. So how much bigger is the overall collection compared to what we see in that, in the house, in that apartment? That's a very personal question. <laughs> You're um, like, I can't I would give away say, how much I have. I would say that represented probably maybe 30% of the overall collection. Oh my God. I love it. I collected unicorns as a kid, but not to that extent. I still love it. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm so grateful that I hung on to the collection. Obviously, a lot of the pieces were pro procured during my adulthood, um, but a majority of that is from my childhood. So it was just, it was amazing to be able to use those in the actual film. I love that. Well, Michael, they're wrapping me. Congratulations again to you on this film. I cannot wait for fans to see it in theaters and enjoy everything that comes with it because you deserve it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Michael. Bye-bye.